Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about field value substitutions. What does that mean? Well, you got a list of stuff. It could be country names, state names, products, people's names, whatever. Any list of stuff. And that's the list of allowed stuff. But you still want to allow your users to type in their own stuff. But... A lot of the times users type in things wrong. For example, when people place orders on my website, I didn't want to maintain an entire list of all the countries in the world. I want to be able to allow people to type in whatever country they want, but people misspell their own country names or they have localized versions of it. For example, on the screen here, you can see Polska. Some people from Poland type that in, right? So this is a video where I'm going to show you how to take a list of known items. We're going to do countries and the spellings that you want, and we'll be able to look at all of the common misspellings and we'll just automatically replace them, okay? But again, this works with pretty much anything. You can do it with names, you can do it with products, you can do it, you, you name it. So today's question comes from Brandon in Torrance, California, one of my Platinum members. He says, I've got a bunch of country names spelled wrong in my customer table. Is there an easy way to fix them without forcing users to choose from a set list? I still want people to be able to type in whatever they want since I don't want to keep a complete list of all the countries. Yes, I went through the exact same thing a few months ago with my database. I just wanted to do a, a simple you know, query to see, okay, sales by country. Which countries do I get the most sales from? And of course, the United States was number one. Uh, I think Canada was number two, UK was number three, and so on. But at that point, I noticed how many people type in weird different things for their countries. Even people from USA type in a bunch of different stuff, right? United States, USA, U period, S period, A period, and so on. So I decided to basically put together a standardized listing, but I still want people to be able to type in what they want because country names do change from time to time. And I wasn't to the point where I wanted to force people to pick from a list. So this is an option. And I know country names are something you could just put together a big long list and make everybody pick from a list. But sometimes I've, I've built other databases like POS systems where the client wanted the user to be able to pick from a list of products, but still wanted to be able to freely edit it and you know put freeform text in there for either walk-ins or custom jobs or whatever. So this... Even though the countries might not apply to you, you might find some other use for this stuff, okay? Now, some things you should know before we get started. This is an expert level video. What does that mean? Well, it's beyond the basics. You should know all the basics. It's a little more advanced. We're gonna be working with some relationships and some action queries. So let me give you some a list of videos you should watch first. First off, if you've been following me for any length of time and you know my tech help free template, go watch this video. Last week, I put this together where I changed it so that the default country in my database is USA. The reason being is because I used to just leave USA blank, but then I realized recently that, well, blank means I don't know what it is. And I had people in the table where I literally did not know what their country was. So that is what null is for. So I really should have had a default value in here. So I changed it to USA. So go watch this for information on how I did that. You will need to know some relationships, so go watch this video if you're not comfortable with relationships yet. You should know what an outer join is. If not, go watch this one. And you should know how to create an update query. If not, if you need any of this stuff, go watch these videos. They're free. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and come on back. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help Free Template. This is a free database you can get off my website if you want to. And in here, I got a customer table. And the customer table has a country table. Now, let's say you get some people typing in some weird stuff, right? You got US, you got USA, you got America, you got United States, you got America, you got, you got all, I, I see everything, trust me. Here are some of the substitutions in my own table. Sometimes, for example, you get regional spellings like that. So the person that lives there wants to spell it that way, and that's fine. Um, but I want to correct it in my database to the Americanized version, right? Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of ampersands. I like to have the actual whole world and the whole word and in my database. And again, it's just a matter of standardization. 
So if I do a query and I want to see how many sales do I have from a specific country, it knows it by name. Um, sometimes, like my database, I don't get the um, the non-standard uh, USA characters, right? The little, you know, the guys with the umlauts over them and all those things. So they come in as question marks. So I like to automatically change that over. Uh, some things like, like here, Deutschland again, all right? Czech Republic, there's some different spellings for that. So a lot of it is just a matter of, you know, sometimes it's people misspelling. Australia was really bad. I actually fixed Australia uh, many months ago before I put this table together and I did them all by hand. And there were so many different variations on Australia and they were all misspellings. So as far as I'm aware, there's only one way to spell Australia. So I know, I know other countries, there's lots of different ways to spell them, but. Okay, anyway, so this, this is the table that I use in my database. And this is all just what people have typed in for me. Sometimes there's extra spaces can do it too, right? You get a little extra spaces in places where that, that wasn't one. There's some other ones I saw where there's extra spaces. But anyways, so let's type in a couple other different ones. We got, uh, let's say someone typed in Canada wrong, like Canada, like that. Or we got a UK, or we got a French, right? So there's just different misspellings in here. Now, and again, I want to emphasize this is for something where you don't want to necessarily standardize it in a table where the user has to pick from a list of countries and then you have to maintain that table. All right. And it's an option. Again, I'm just telling you all the different Lego pieces that are available. You can put them together wherever you want. If you want to make a standardized country table, that's up to you. Now, I'm going to set up a simple table that has the country name in it the way I want it spelled in my database and the known misspelling. There's lots of different ways to do this. This is how I'm doing mine, okay? Um, I'm gonna basically call uh, this the country T and it's gonna be the country and the misspelling. Now, this is one of those rare instances where I'm not gonna bother to put an ID in this field because I'm only using it for this one purpose. It's not gonna have any relationships anywhere else except to itself maybe. Um, and, and the relationship that I'm going to have is going to be based on the country name to try to match it up with what's in the customer table. So this is the rare instance where I don't think I need an ID. You can add one if you want to, if you think you'll need it later on. I'm not going to. All right. So country T. Or co yeah, country T. Uh, primary key. No, I'm going to say no this time. All right. It's very rare that I do this, but I am doing it today. All right. So. Let's say you've got, uh, you know, you've got some misspellings that you know, like USA and just US. We don't know the other ones yet. And let's say we've got, um, you know, Australia. <laughs> oh, no, this is the right one. So this should be Australia and Australia. Okay. Which, which sometimes when I was going through that list and, and fixing them by hand, I really sometimes couldn't tell if it was Austria or Australia. So if there was an L anywhere in it, I assumed Australia. <laughs> All right, we'll just put those in there for now. There's just those two. All right, so save and close that. Now we're going to make a query to match those up with the ones that are in the customer table. All right, match up our known misspellings. So we're going to create a query. And I don't need this and I don't need that. We can shut those down. All right, I'm going to bring in the customer table first and the country that's in here we can shorten that up a little bit by saying is not null you could deal with nulls in a whole separate one you know if you, if you don't have if you don't have a country then that's you know that that turns into now you got to just get the country right and then we're going to bring in the country table over here and we're going to relate the country over here with the misspelling over there Right, I want to find out which ones of these are misspelled. So this is why I'm making that weird relationship. Okay, and bring over the misspelling if you want to see it. And if I run this now, all right, this just shows me the countries in this table that have known misspellings. There are still some other ones, but these are just the known ones. Okay. Now, what I can do is I can turn this into an update query, and this will automatically fix this guy to be that guy, right? This is how it's supposed to be spelled. So let's turn this into an update query, and I'm going to update this to 
Now, since I got two tables that have the name country in it, I have to use its full name. So I'm going to update this to country t dot country. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to save this as my, let's say, uh, country misspelled Q. All right, my country misspelled Q. Now, when I run this, that should fix that misspelling. So if I go and look in my customer table, it should have fixed just that one. Where is it? Country, right there. All right, it fixed the U.S. It was just U.S. before, right? And it fixed the U.S. Right, that's the only one that I had in my known country table. Or, uh, yeah, U.S. got changed to USA. I didn't have any Australas. Now, that is the known misspellings. What about the unknown misspellings? All right, the unknown misspellings are a little harder to find. Those are the ones we don't know are spelled wrong. Okay, so after you update your table with this, so we fixed all the ones we know about, now we can find the ones we don't know about. And we will do that in tomorrow's class. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it now because members at any level can watch stuff as soon as it's finished. And I'm going to work on it right now and record it and upload it and you'll be able to watch it. Otherwise. Come back tomorrow. Well, unless you're already watching this in the future, in which case it's probably already online. Today is Monday, what is it? April 14th, 2025. So come back tomorrow. <laughs> but that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos. Plus, you get access to my Code Vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.